last Sunday of the church here is from the prophet Malachi, the fourth chapter. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the skull. You shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. The epistle reading for this morning is from St. Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, the third chapter. Now, we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now, such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, 
You will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, for not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its destruct desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Also, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, alas, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword, be led captive among all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs and sun and moon and stars. And on the earth, distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the seas and the waves. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
because of the promised redemption in grace. The sadly, Jesus' words go largely unheard and unheeded today. Most people are not watching for the coming day of the Lord, the Lord anticipating the joy promised by the Lord on that day. Most might be watching for the coming Christmas sale at the mall, but expecting the judgment day? Not likely. The return of Christ is not even on the radar for most people, even Christians. Neither feared nor expected. Because most people are just too busy with the cares and things of this world to even care or think about that coming day. Think about this. We just celebrated Veterans Day. It used to be called Armistice Day. The day when peace was signed to mark the end of World War I. It was the day that was set aside to be remembered and celebrated as the end of the war to end all wars. But are we still at war? Yes. All over the world, the nations rage, <coughs> blood is shed, and death reigns. What about disease? Pandemics move. Every year, new strains of viruses are discovered that are ever more resistant to the antibiotics that used to cure them. Even worldwide climate, climate change and economic disaster threatens. Tornadoes are getting worse as whole cities are wiped out by sustained wind speeds that were unheard of in the past. Just a week or so ago, one of the deadliest typhoons ever recorded just pounded the Philippines, and thousands lost their lives. So yes, the signs Jesus foretold are all around us. But sadly, most of us are so busy at work and school, even here in the church, that the Lord could return, and if it were possible, might go unnoticed. <coughs> But dear Christians, we dare not take this time of God's grace for granted as we pray and we prepare for the coming day of the Lord. Remember, Jesus warned the people of Israel and Jerusalem, as for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Just as they should listen to Jesus, we too should live heeding and obeying his words. Unfortunately, busy as they were with running their shops, living their lives, seeing things according to their own reason and physical eyes, they couldn't be bothered with such warnings. And so the people said, there's no way this can't be. It took 40 years to build that temple. It's the place where God dwells. It's not coming down. But look what happened. Jesus warned them, still that they did not repent. And why not? Because they couldn't believe that such destruction could happen to them. They thought that because they were God's people, they were invincible. They took for granted God's mercy as much as they took for granted His word of the law, and His prophecy of judgment and destruction, because they couldn't accept that the temple could be brought down. And, distracted as they were with the things of this world, they did not see Jesus for who he was or pay any real attention to what he spoke. And dear Christians, living in this world today, you and I know that in many ways we are not much different. Even we who bear the name of Christ, the things of this world and our own busy lives all too often get in the way of our hearing, heeding, and obeying God's commands. And that we should repent. You see, just as today, those people could not accept that Jesus was the prophet who came to Jerusalem to fulfill all prophecy. It was too bizarre to think that God had come to the temple just to be seen destroyed. That Jesus in the flesh was actually going to be the sacrifice to put all flesh to shame. All the people could see was the reality of the here and now. And again, are we any different in our temptation to fall into sin and unbelief? You see, they weren't listening to the words of Moses any more than we often do. 
They've forgotten the prophecy and words of the Bible were focused on how the Messiah would give his own body once and all for the sins of the world. They couldn't see it coming, and we often take it for granted. We often live as if we matter most, and God did not matter at all. You see, many then did not listen to the words of warning from the last prophet, Malachi, either, when he foretold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all evildoers will be stubble. The day is coming that shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so it will leave them neither root nor branch. Those are stern, harsh words of judgment from the Lord himself and his prophet. And we, too, must take them seriously. The people then should have listened to the Lord and the prophets, because in a mere 35 years, in 70 AD, the temple did come down. Jerusalem was destroyed by the Gentiles. It was destroyed when God used Rome to fulfill Christ's prophecy. And ever since then, as prophecy was fulfilled then, prophecy is being fulfilled today. And these prophecies of God's judgment, wars, and tumults will continue until that day when he returns to set all things right. But just as it was then, so it is today. To fear the wrath of God is just not the way people think. The old Adam in us doesn't fear the Lord. The old Adam in us trusts to our own goodness. But thanks be to God. The Lord preaches judgment to us. He preaches the law to us so that we might repent. Because even we Christians are tempted to get caught up in the spirit of this age, in this spirit of prosperity, to become so busy with the cares and things of this world that we too ignore the coming day of judgment. Instead, let us hear the words of our Lord and take them to heart. We of all people should remember God's words to Moses. That if they obey my commands, I will be their God and they will be my people. We pray the Lord would help us in this busy world in which we live to live lives which are busy in holiness. Holiness to which he has called us as his people. We pray that the Lord would strengthen us through his spirit to quickly repent and desire to live according to his word. But, because of our sin, we must remember that based solely on our obedience, we too would surely be lost, numbered among the Gentiles. For we too, even we the baptized, all too often live in a way contrary to God's word, just going about our business just as the rest of the world does, thinking that the judgment day must be a long way off if it is coming at all. But dear Christian, during this time of God's grace, we must not take God's loving kindness and His mercy for us for granted. What do you think would happen if Christ had given an exact date of His return, and it was still a thousand years or more off? Very naturally, people would say, well, that's far off. We have plenty of time. Let someone else do the work. But the Lord doesn't give His people the opportunity to be lazy and doing good. Instead, just as Paul told the Thessalonians, pray for us that the word would spread quickly, that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. You see, that's how you will do it, through the spreading of the word. And not just the word of law and judgment, that can't save you, but the word of the gospel, the preaching of Christ for you. And that's why the apostle continues saying, do not tolerate something who's idle in their work. Certainly, he might be talking about physical labor, but of course, they're also talking about the spreading of the gospel, that work of sharing the good news. We're not to be lazy about the work that the Lord has given his church to do, in sharing the message of Christ, preaching and teaching faithfully. You see, it's in teaching the truth of justification through faith alone that God brings salvation to the nations. And yes, this work is urgent. Especially in these latter days when so many have drifted away from grace alone, faith alone, and scripture alone. So many people have been led astray from the gospel by deceiving teachers. But thanks be to God, we have been taught by the righteous one. The word of God itself is preached among us. Christ and him crucified is still the center of our message, not to be overclouded by our good works 
Because we do have the word of, word of warning, but even more importantly, we have the promises of God preached in our midst. And yet, how is it that our Lord can give such dire predictions of destruction and judgment, and then turn around and say, you'll be hated for my name's sake, but not a hair on your head will perish? It sounds like a contradiction in terms. And obviously, to our human reason, this doesn't make any sense. Which is it, Jesus? Judgment or mercy? Of course, the answer is yes. To those whom the Holy Spirit has worked faith, this apparent contradiction makes perfect sense. Trusting what Christ says brings us great comfort in the times of our own suffering, temptation, and even when we might be facing our own deaths. Whether it's the hands of the wicked or the hands of the wicked foe who afflicts us with all manner of disease and temptation. You see, Christ's words alone bring the Christian the comfort of knowing that even in death, even if we were to be torn apart by lions, not one hair of our head will be harmed because Christ has died so that our bodies will not be lost to the grave. On the last day, that coming day of judgment, that day of mercy for us, our bodies will be raised from the dust just as the Son of Righteousness was raised first on that glorious Easter morning. And every head on your head will be made new, and you will live again, but this time in sinless, imperishable perfection, just as your Lord is perfect and imperishable. And so when we hear warnings about such things as terrorism, global warming, even the decline of the Christian faith in our nation and the world around us, should we be alarmed? We should be concerned, certainly, but not distressed, because these things are expected as we near the end, because this world will come to an end. It will melt away as it is burned up. Jesus says so himself. But you, dear Christians, need not fear because you have been rescued from the fire of that day. For all who believe and have been baptized shall be saved. As our Lord says, however, those who do not believe will be condemned. God's mercy is offered and extended to all, but not all will accept it. And thankfully for you, through holy baptism, you who believe God's word and trust in him, you are protected from God's wrath. For you, his judgment was poured out on his own son, Jesus. And when you hear about wars, don't be surprised that there is no peace in this world. By nature, we are selfish and wicked. And so there will continue to be wars until that last day. The kingdoms of this world will not know true peace until the Prince of Peace comes, restores order, and fully reveals and establishes his unending kingdom of heaven. But yet until that day, we find our peace here in this kingdom that is preached and offered to us. And because of that, you need not fear the coming day of the Lord. Not because you're complacent or ignorant, but because you know the truth. And in knowing that truth, you know that that day will bring the joy of your salvation as you stand with all the assembled saints and rejoice in the kingdom which has no end. That no sin will ever touch or dar darken. Because you have been taken to a place where no fire can reach you because you are already partakers of God's kingdom. You are subjects to the righteous king of glory. You are Christians, God's holy people by grace alone. What comfort that should give to our spirits. That Jesus has promised to deliver us from these things. That he has, in fact, already delivered us from the hands of Satan in the day of wrath. That he paid for our sins, not with gold or silver, his own precious blood and innocent body he has delivered you from the grasp and control of sin, death, and hell when he had your pastor pour the holy and precious waters of baptism over you and even your children. You see, your Lord has made you his saints through the preaching and hearing of his holy word. Nothing less than the proclamation of Christ and crucified for the sins of the world, a message to be proclaimed until the end of the world, even if there are only two or three left to gather in his name. You see, the first thing the unbeliever wants to do is ignore.
ignore or deny the word of God. Get away from it. Keep it at a distance and ignore it. You see, the authority of God's word must go so that man may sprout his lies from the foolishness of his own heart. And it is always man's desire to make himself into God and king. Thankfully, that foolishness will pass away, just as you have already rejected such foolish thinking because of God's word. That foolishness will pass away and turn to dust, just as those who speak such nonsense believing it will be lost eternally. Because of man's sin, we can't expect the worst in this world. Disaster, war, disease, suffering, death, even persecution for our faith. And yet, Jesus gives us something different. He speaks words of hope to us in these last days. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. You see, his word alone is your strength and shield against sin, the devil, and even death itself. Your sure foundation is found in Christ alone, not in the false teachers of this world who have fallen prey to the slippery words of the devil. Rather, your foundation is upon the rock of Christ. That's where you stand since you're on his word and sacrament. So while even we Christians can expect the worst, our Lord does give us the best. He gives us the treasures and keys of heaven so that we may live eternally. You see, even Jerusalem, which was torn down and to this day lies in ruin, the temple nothing more than a carcass or shell, the bare bones of what it once was. Jerusalem itself will be restored, just as our bodies will be restored and raised on the last day. Because on that day, the new Jerusalem that is raised again is not a Jerusalem raised by human hands, but it is the heavenly Jerusalem which descends by, from heaven, created and made new by Christ himself. It's there, in that new creation, with your Lord and all the saints, we will be gathered in that holy city, again, not to sacrifice in a new temple, but to be in the presence of the new temple. God himself, Christ Jesus, the Lamb, who sits upon the throne, for the risen Christ is the new temple, for all sacrifices have been fulfilled in him. You need no other except that which he gives. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Watching the Divine Service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Carlisle, Iowa. Join us this coming Sunday at the Divine Service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our Divine Service is followed by Adult Bible Study and Sunday School at 10.30. You're also invited to join us for Vespers and Catechesis for the entire family on Wednesday evenings beginning at 6.30 p.m. We also gather for the morning prayer service of Matins on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Holy Cross is a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and is located at 1100 Market Street, Carlisle, Iowa.